and welcome to this rather lengthy brand named model, the Lone Star Roadmaster Flyers Supercars number 28 Peugeot 404. The rebadging of Lone Star's lineup was always a bit awkward, evidenced on the bases with patched up titles. But anyway, I have here a very battered and bent Peugeot 404 casting. It's probably been stepped on at some point in its history, causing the A-pillars to bend and snap. The 404 had been part of the Lone Star's lineup since 1967 and was produced up until 1976. Green castings would have originally been equipped with a roof rack carrying skis. This is a gorgeous real world Peugeot 404. Diecast manufacturers Lone Star started their Roadmasters range in 1956, initially at a scale of approximately 1 in 35, but began producing models at 1 in 50 scale in 1960. Then in 1966, they launched the Impi series. These were 3 inch castings designed to compete with Corgi and Matchbox offerings. However, to differentiate from those at this scale, Impies had as many operating features as possible, including opening doors, bonnets, boots, steerable front axles, and dual headlights. While Corgi and Matchbox offered those features on several models, seldom would they combine all of those features on one casting. Lone Stars commanded a slightly higher price than the smaller Matchbox models of the era as a result. They also tagged on the supercars branding at this point, while advertising usually led with the MP name. However, the indulgence of opening features often meant proportions were off on many replicas, with ill-fitting parts and wheels that while standardised across the range were too small. Then in 1969, the Flyers range was launched. Apologies for the caustic soda anti-climax. My camera ran out of battery at the key moment. But anyway, Lone Star had spent 1968 devising a plan, like other manufacturers, to produce low friction wheels to counteract Mattel and Hot Wheels, who had instant success after their release that year. Lone Star removed the rivets from the bases and replaced them with a flathead screw to aid servicing. They were also modified to allow for larger, low friction plastic tyres with silver hubs. These looked quite realistic and filled the gaps left in the arches by the smaller, older wheels. A casualty of this was naturally the steerable front axle. The word Impi was also removed from the bases as the range was phased out. Flyers also received new, mostly metallic colours while the headlight jewels were lost. Sales stuttered after the initial flyer's success, so in 1971, Lone Star opted to fit thinner wheels with a five-spoke foil print. These would help highlight their low friction capabilities. 1971 was also the year they released their most revered casting, the Vauxhall Forenza. I customised one for my dad in 2021, and I've linked that here. My flame approach to straightening the window piece failed. It was just too badly damaged. So I separated the front and rear sections. The front side windows and sunroof were set open, so this fix shouldn't be at all obvious. I will need to glue these pieces in, however. By 1975, the series was waning. In previous years, attention had been focused on improving the long neglected commercial series. So now the flyers were in need of an update. Cost-saving measures meant models received numerous changes. Bonnets and boots on many models, including this Peugeot, were cast shut, though this and the Ford Taurus did receive a roof rack. But in 1978, the Flyers series was discontinued. The MP range resurfaced in 1978 using many of the same castings. These though had plastic bases with all features cast shut, interiors removed, and windows blacked out. They were relatively successful and lasted until Lone Star went into receivership in 1983. So there was a simplified history of Lone Star, Roadmaster, Impi, Supercar Flyers. So while I fill and smooth an unexplained hole in the back of my Peugeot, a brief word on the history of the 404. It is a large family car that was introduced by the French automaker in 1960. Styled by Pininfarina, 
It was available as a saloon like this casting, an estate and a pickup truck with a convertible and coupe following in 1962 and 63 respectively. Once more I've opted for a high coat paint on this casting. It's Ford Signal or Race Green. It sits between Tamiya's Park Green and Light Green in shade and is a really nice match in my opinion. The 404 was powered by a 1.6 litre 4 cylinder petrol engine or a 1.9 litre diesel was available as an option. It earned a reputation for its durability and good value, becoming a popular taxi. It was built up until 1991 in Kenya where it had won the Safari Rally in 1963, 66, 67 and 68. As well as Kenya, it was also manufactured in Argentina, Chile and Canada. French production of the 404 totaled at 1.8 million when production ceased there in 1975. Worldwide production topped 2.8 million units. With the window sections glued in, the interior sits within the straightened cabin. The base plate connects via a slot and tongue at the rear and handily screws back together at the front. But this is how the seriously bent and broken Lone Star Flyers Peugeot 404 looked. Other than the fronts, the paintwork looked remarkably solid despite the damage. The roof had been squashed, causing serious issues with the transparency. It had also affected the suspension at the front. Of the Lone Star castings, this is one of the better ones in terms of proportions. Sadly though, this wasn't one of the better examples. Well, until now that is. I'm really satisfied with this transformation. I did at times think that the roof might be a little too much to salvage, especially seeing as reproduction parts for this casting do not exist. But some hammering and gluing, burning and cutting have all helped restore its original posture. In a video hampered by recording issues, including the reduced caustic soda bath and complete omission of any footage of the headlight trim detailing, I think the outcome absolutely outshines the production. I think those round lights and shiny new silver grille both provide the fascia with plenty of character now. And the green I'm a big fan of. So if you've enjoyed this restoration and would like to see more Lone Star Roadmaster MP Supercar flyers, leave a like and a comment. Be sure to subscribe to keep up to date with the latest releases, but all that leaves me to say is thank you for watching and I'll see you again for the next one. Bye for now.